say it is because we believe in God, that is why we have not been developed as a nation. Do we say religion has been an hindrance in our development? Today, we are going to discuss religion and development. You are welcome to Abrahamic Mission, the program that is designed to enlighten you more about our various religions, especially Islam and Christianity. The way it's been done, not the way it ought to be. It is not to compare and contrast which one is better, which one is not, but for us to understand the way it's been done in the two sides. And the other side will appreciate the other side. To me, my name is Imam Fouad Adeyemi. And joining me in the studio to discuss this topic today is our, our Reverend Isaac Komalafe, who is the Northern Regional Overseer of Foursquare Church here in Abuja. And he's also, he's also the chairman of our PFN, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, FCC branch. Reverend, you are welcome. Thank you so much, Imam. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. And also, is our, I call him itinerant scholar who is always everywhere in different parts of the world, is uh, their Imam Shafi Abdul Karim Majemu, is the chief Imam of the Islamic Platform Society of Nigeria with their headquarters in Lagos. Imam, you are welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Today we will be discussing religion and development. But we have seen that we are a nation that believes so much in God, but unfortunately, I do not know whether we develop or whether we are not developing because of our religiosity. But before we discuss that, I want you to listen to some of the messages we have received. This man writes, he says, Your program is the best thing that has happened to us. No prejudice, just understanding and information. This man writes, a good conversation. You see, our business as parents is more related to that of a farmer who cultivates yam. The farmer uses stick to support and direct the tendrils to the right side. Otherwise, the yam will refuse to follow the stick. This is exactly what is expected in children's upbringing. Tony, hello, my name is Odejo Bikpelumi Martins. I'm living in Ado Ekiti, Ekiti State. I learned a lot from what Mrs. Uzuaku had said, most especially this Muslim woman. I really love her words. She spoke reality. I can't wait to make her my mentor, but she's not a man smiling. She's a, they she said, I'm a Christian. When it comes to mentoring, mm. when there's a quality in somebody that you, you admire, yeah. either it's a male or female, mm. it does not stop you from, from having some, your mentor. I mean, the person your mentor, mm. if you know that there's quality, good thing that you can learn from him yeah. or her, mm. that we look at it. Uh, in as much also as we have our teachers in school who mentor us. Oh, okay. It could be male or female. Okay. You do not say because mm. your teacher is a female as mm. a male student, mm. you won't mm. take lectures from mm. her. Mm. You have to. So no, I remember when we were in school, there was this teacher. She's the one who teaches us mathematics when we were in secondary school. All of us, we hate mathematics with passion. <laughs> but when this woman came, she be, you, you will be almost cry if you miss her class. Yes, she will right. not beat you. She, the way she now taught mathematics like we are eating bread and cake, bread cake. and butter. Yes, so yes. all of us became interested in math. That's why people like us, we even had pass in mathematics yes, when yes. we finished our second The only way you can pass is to like the teacher. The yes, teacher. yes, the teacher. woman was wonderful. Yes. Yes. So yes. No, to me, when women are leading, I, I honor them. And yeah. I, think, I think we need to look at the place of women in society also. Mm -hmm. They have a role to play. Mm -hmm. And because if somebody is now discriminating because this is a woman, mm -hmm. And this is a man, then that we're having some issues because all of all we are created equal before God. Okay. Thank you, sir. This one, let me continue. Said, My greetings to Imam Fouad Adeyemi and the guest speakers. Thank you for this educative program. Indeed, listening to your program has broadened my horizon so much. All said on this program to, tonight are the right things. So, are the right things to correct child abuse. Factually speaking, Parents have 70% role, government has 20% role, and religion has 10% role to play in the moral bringing of our children. Until these roles are played out, we will continue to get it wrong. Thank you for this beautiful program. Let's know the right name of this program, Engineer Wilson Omoru. Engineer Wilson Omoru, the name of this program is Abrahamic Mission. This the program takes its name from the father of faith, of the three main world religion, which is Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. These three religions, they 
source their power, they source their religion from it. So, and that is why this program is mainly meant for Christian, Muslim, and uh, uh, Jewish, Jewish religion. Judaism. But I, 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 I assure you, very soon you will see you will see a Jewish rabbi right. on this program. We are working on that, and you will be able to. Many of us don't even know uh, what is Jewish do they, religion. religion. Do they really exist? Why do they exist? What do they do at all? But don't worry, very soon we will also know. This one says, I'm really happy with this program. The program with the program. The problems of al I think, is from our, from our leaders and rich peoples in Nigeria. Uh, okay, and rich people in Nigeria. Because there are, they are not giving the zakat according to the Islamic right. And they are not helping the orphans and widows. That is why we decided to go out to the streets and start begging. I think the man is reacting to the discussion on Zakat. The way it's on uh, al yeah. the way it was discussed that day was that the problem is from parents, it's from government, and uh, it's from the community that everybody should be able to take care of children that he has. If you, it's not about the number of children that matters. Mm -hmm. It's about which of them, how many can you take, take care, care of? of? And that is the number that you should be able to, uh, to, bring to forth. have, to bring forth. So... That is what we was discussed. Uh, this man writes again. He said, good evening. My name is Daniel Henry. I'm from Cross River State. And this is my contribution. Why are all Muslims always having problems marrying Christians? Thanks, NTA TV. We are enjoying your program. I don't know if you hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Muslims do, do not have any problem marrying Christians mm -hmm. uh, because it's very open, uh, it depends on your choice and what you feel you want for yourself. If you feel a Christian lady is what meets up your requirement and standard as a wife, and you have seen those salient, uh, inherent uh, features in her as a mother, as a wife, someone who can mother your children, then definitely you're allowed to do that. Yeah. And what we have discovered generally has been that religion is very, very powerful. And when you are not on the same I've uh, seen the same on the same page. Yes, right. yes. It's always difficult. Mm -hmm. Even when there is that cross marriages, Muslim, Christian, Christian, Muslim. Sincerely, you have seen some difficult situations because somebody is pulling this way, the other is pulling this way. And that is why he is talking about that. There are always some challenges that almost happen when it happens that way. But there are both of them out to develop the right mindset, uh, knowing what they want. Nobody is forcing you to do this. You're doing it from your own volition, from your own uh, mindset. So if you're doing it, there must be some way out of how you want to operate, uh, what you, how you want to conduct your affairs as couples. So once that is agreed at the initial stage, I think it will be fine for them. Okay. Imam said, I think it will be fine. Uh, hello, presenter. I wish to express my sincere appreciation for what you guys are doing. Hey, I think the language we are using, we, we, what you say, you guys are doing. Uh, okay. <laughs> is it, this your program is very educating. Yeah. It has to be televised during the evening hours when majority of the households are around yeah. and awake so that majority of persons in the society we get to share from it. James Amuse from Port Harcourt. Mm -hmm. Well, we thank you, Mr. James, for this, but I want you to know that this program is apart from the, that is being showing now, is also going to be repeated every Sunday by 4 p.m. Okay. Every wow. Sunday by 4 okay. p.m. And the first time you watch it is 11.30. Live. Live, 11.30 in the, in the evening on Friday, okay. 11.30 to 12.30. Then on Sunday, it is 4 p.m. I think that time is the, one of the best time. Yeah, if you are a time. Christian, you will have come from the church. church. If you are a Muslim, you will have, you will have also off. come. Even if you travel, most people will have return come back. Come. So when you are watching, call other people to join you in watching too. So we thank you. And you can also be part of this program by calling this number, 070-449-4949. Again, 070-449-4949. That is the number you are seeing on your television. From now, you can be sending us messages. But please do not call. Only send SMS messages or WhatsApp messages. And that is when we can enjoy ourselves. When you are calling, you will be disturbing us. Just send your message by God's grace. But I still want to, you to know that we receive hundreds of messages all the time. So we will try as much as possible to read the ones that are readable. 
put it at the back of your mind. Yes, let me also, before we go on a short break, let me read this one. This one says, indeed, the family has failed the society. Parents pay more attention to their jobs and leave the training of their children to the teachers and daily minders. This effect, this even affects the children academically because no one checks their books to even to give the appropriate assistance at home. I can say that this is why we have the high rate of social vices these days. Uh, and, and, and that is true, but everybody must have his own value that you are pursuing in raising your family. Mm. I would say teach your child in a way it will go. When he grows up, he won't, he won't depart. Um, from childhood, yes, the parent may go to work and everybody go to places, but let every parent knows that, know that you have a responsibility. And, and now looking at the government having 20% of the blame and the church 10% of the blame, I, don't, I would think that way. Let somebody, you are bringing a child into the world, know that you are 100% responsible. Other people could be in addition to helping you one way or the other. Let every parent know that you have responsibility and face it very, very well. That would okay. be my appeal. Okay. Mom, you or we should, I should just go yeah, ahead. It's okay. Okay. It's uh, this man says, Isiaku from Joss, your discussion is your discussion is so educative and timely. However, its timing is only for few persons like me who just stumble on it. Please let there be a repeat many times at hours before network news so that parents can benefit and change for good yes we thank you for that suggestion but the time we are showing it now you can still watch it like i've said earlier on 4 p.m every sunday 4 p.m i think that is one of the best time no even sports most of the time i don't think oh, well it's a Saturday uh, so but at least that time is very is good a, time it's a very good time so this one says my name is samuel akils I'm really glad to be a partaker of this program. And I really learn a lot from you. May God bless you all. Amen. Amen. This one right, he said, good job, done, sir. And also extend my greetings to both Ajay Amoram and Elder Julian Uzuaku. Now my submission. Since we have three major religions in the country, and none of it is supporting killings and corruption, how then we have Boko Haram, we have Boko Haram bandits kidnapping and corrupt leaders in the country. By Mendele from Adwekiti. Uh, also, this one we have, it says, both religion teaches peace everywhere, everywhere in the Holy Quran and Holy Bible. But we don't know where Boko Haram got their teachings to be killing innocent men and women. Message from Alaji Arogundade Munir from Ede, Oshun State. This man says, Great, pro, it's a great program, sir. He said, and I commend our guests today. They have performed well and say almost everything. And may Almighty God continue to strengthen you, Imam, for this mighty program. Mashallah. Uh, probably I will take this one as our last message for today. Uh, it is Imam Eda Julian Uzuaku and Aja Mariam. I thank you all so much for taking time today to talk and discuss seriously about child upbringing. Ajay Maria mentioned that education is very important to implement in their lives. In that education, you must first counsel the abused child and know what the problems are. Thank and God bless you all for the program. Apostle Dr. SBC Nwachuku, G-O-C-M-M-M-I. I don't know, it's the name of a church probably. Yes. We thank you. So we will go on a very short break now before we now come back to discuss the topic of the day. Slavery is an evil practice abolished all over the world over 200 years ago. But today, human traffickers are selling human beings as slaves in Africa. It is your responsibility to make sure that you and the people you know do not fall into slavery. Don't believe fake promises of jobs abroad. People went to say Libya, Italy. Italy no easy when they carry me on top water. Four days now they lock me for his house. No food, no water. I nearly die. Now God, when me heaven and earth, now save me. If you get one letter for Nigeria, you get junior one, you say you don't get papa, you don't get mama, then make you come out. I beg go. Go they do farm work. You better pass best when enter road. Don't accept to travel to Europe through the Sahara Desert. 
you may be walking into slavery. Don't be a slave. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. You are welcome. If you are just joining back, if you are just joining us, this is Abrahamic mission. And today we are discussing religion and development. If we look at it in our country, we claim to be religious, both Islam and Christianity, and yet we do not make it. The other small, small countries I see like Rwanda, mm. they are making it big. And countries like UAE, they are highly religious, yet they are highly developed. Country like Sweden, country like Vienna, they are highly religious and yet they are highly developed. Like France, France is even a Catholic uh, country, yet they are highly developed. We in Nigeria, incidentally, we are lucky. If it is Christian that can develop, we have Christian enough. If it is Muslim that can develop, we have Muslim enough, yet we are not developed. Joining me again, once again, is Imam Shafiu Abdul Karim Majemu, who is the, imam of the, the, the chief imam of the Islamic platform. Society of Nigeria in Lagos. Imam, you are welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank and you. also, Reverend Isaac Komalafe is the Northern Regional Overseer of First Square Gospel Church. He's also the chairman of a Pentecostal, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria in FCT. Chairman, ah, you are welcome, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Together, we'll be discussing this program. We'll be discussing this topic. But you can also be part by calling this number 070 449 44949. Again, 070-449-44949 is in your uh, screen. You can just send a message. We will be, you'll be part of this. Reverend, we have been talking of development. To you as a pastor, as a religious person in the, in the, in the ministry of the, God, of the Lord, what do you think development is? Or how do you perceive development? Well, I, I, I look at development as emancipating human beings from a level, low level here to a glorious level here. And that is the reason why Jesus came to take us from where we were to where we were supposed to be. And even God, when he was creating the whole world, in the book of, the book of Genesis, the Bible says, let there be light. Because there was darkness and there was light. That is development. You are, you are touching people's lives, you are making their life to be meaningful, and also adding values to people's lives. That, that is what I see at development, and also from a religious point of view also, that is changing people from where they are to where they're supposed to be. Changing people from where they are, from where they're supposed to be. I think that's a very good one. Imam? Yeah, um, uh, development from the religious point of view, uh, and uh, I would like to um, also take a leave from what the Reverend just, has just said. Uh, development is about human emancipation, okay. um, trying to create values for life. People are created, and they're created, God even said that you are not created for fun. You are created for a purpose, and that purpose must be fulfilled. How do you fulfill that purpose? Is by adding value to life. When someone has a child, and the only way you can add value to that child's life is to provide education, to provide feeding, to make him responsible to the society, to himself, and to the family, and to the nation at large. And that is uh, what we. Uh, who can say about development in the purview of religion. And making religion, well, somebody just talked about religion, why do we have religion, and religion is bringing all about conflict, violence around the world, and so on. Well, it's not about the religion, because religion is universal. Christianity is universal, Islam is universal, Judaism is universal. But we're looking at other people, they're doing well, and you now look at your own context, then meaning the people, there's different between the people and the religion. So if people do not migrate or integrate into religious tenets properly and fitting, then they'll be lacking. And that you see the imbalances. But in the situation whereby they're able to meet up with their religious tenet and able to measure up with what religion has actually come to teach us, then you will see a lot of differences in our way of life and thinking. Is it as you want to say something? Yes, I also want to add to what Imam has said that 
um, development is very important about uh, it's about adding values to life. Now, from your introduction, Imam, you, you, you said that see the way our country has been. Now, what has led up to this situation where we find ourselves? Other countries, they are doing very well. Why are we not doing very well? One of the problems why we are not doing very well is not necessarily because of religion. If it's issue of religion, we're supposed to be the best country in the world. But because we don't have consequences for our behaviors. Here. Please explain. We don't have consequences. Consequences. For our behaviors. Our behaviors. Mm -hmm. How? If somebody has done something wrong mm. and there is penalty and that penalty is mm. also given, mm. then somebody will be afraid of doing the same thing. If somebody is driving, if, you, if, the, if the law says, if you drive without license, you are going to be punished with such a thing. But the moment somebody is arrested, before you know he's going to call somebody up here, somewhere, and say, I'm with the police here, can you talk to him? And somebody is going to press a button somewhere. These are the reasons why we're not developing. In other countries you've mentioned, mm. there are consequences for behaviors. And that is the reason why we are not developing here. People just break law the way they want it. There are rules and there are laws. There are laws, there are rules. But we observe. break them mm. with I'll impunity. Be. And that's why we are not developing with our religion, with all that we are doing. So it's not the issue of whether religion is hindering us or not. It's we that are hindering ourselves. Of course, the place, if, our, if, we, if we practice our religion very well, mm. and we are obeying our tenet of faith, obeying the Holy Bible, as to where, of course, we will be also obeying the government that God has placed over us also. And then also the government also, because who are the people in government? They are not ghosts. They are not angels. They are our people also in one religion or the other. Mm. But nobody wants to come to the level whereby there will be consequences for his behavior. So, and that's what is killing us in this country. Yeah, if I would like to add, I think I have a quotation to support what the Reverend has just said. Mm -hmm. in the Quran, and that is Quran chapter 3, verse 59. Yeah. Which is? He says, who you believe, obey God, his messenger, and those in the, are the constituted authority. Okay. You obey the authority. Mm -hmm. And if you defy in anything, you return back to God. What we are trying to say here is that when religion is properly practiced mm -hmm. and is being used as a model, Mm -hmm. for development. Mm -hmm. We will tend to develop better. We do more of worship in Nigerian country. More of worship. We go to mosques, we go to churches, and then we, we chant all. But the spirituality that religion has come to instill in us, which is the discipline itself, is not there. Starting from the leadership of religion itself, the imams, the pastors, yeah, we have to take responsibility for this. Do you get what, I'm what are we teaching the people? Sometimes we see the politicians as even placing them above us as religious leaders. We don't tell them the truth. So we go to mass, people don't no longer receive sermons that when they leave, they say, wow, I have to change now. I have to change my ways. So these, there are no longer sermons like that in our own mosques and churches. So today we celebrate ourselves. We celebrate impunity. And how do we develop? Because we are not saying the truth. We, I know very well that this man has come to me as an imam. He has, he's holding a political office. And there are certain things that he has been um, given as responsibility to, get, to do to the society, the mm -hmm. to the community. And he's not doing it. Mm -hmm. Instead of me to tell him the truth that you have not done the roads and you have collected money for it. You have not given water that you have collected money for. Do you get what I'm saying? So why are you not doing this? Well, we keep on celebrating ourselves. So I see this as what we call religious hypocrisy. And religious hypocrisy. hypocrisy. Okay. When there is religious hypocrisy, mm. you can never develop. In other parts of the world, mm. they don't worship. Uh, is not something they put on their head, but they are very, very spiritual. And how are you spiritual? Because you bring out love. You love your fellow human being. I ride on good cars. I was also thinking about how others will ride on good cars. I want to ply good roads. I've built my houses, and I, I live in a very good house. What about other people? So if we are not thinking along this line, then would, for us to achieve the Millennium Development Goal is far away from us. Even the 2030 is too close for us to achieve that as far as Nigeria is concerned, because we are not doing the right path. Uh, uh, Imam said something about uh, 
um, the hypocrisy. Religious hypocrisy. Yeah. I also, actually wanted him to explain, but I'm happy that you are taking it Yes. Up. I also want to take it from there. Mm. What, what has led to this religious hypocrisy mm. is selfishness in the heart of everybody. Okay. Because all of us, we are now looking at what I call me, myself, and I. Me, myself, myself and I. <laughs> that is what three in one. Yes, <laughs> just three in one. <laughs> me, myself, and I. It's just only you. Me, myself, now, and that, I. Yes, that has led to nepotism. That has led to hypocrisy we are talking about. That has led to all kind of vices. Corruption. Corruption everywhere. And so when you, when you allow that to happen, then there's everything is just chaotic. And there's no movement, there's no advancement, there's no uh, uh, development. And, and whereas, at the beginning, they're supposed to be, if, if the people that are supposed to bring the development are thinking right, we're supposed to improve our environment. Mm. And where does it start? You are living in a house. The environment is bushy. What do you do about it? You are still waiting for your landlord to come and clear that place. You are, you are a councillor in the local government. What are you doing to improve yourself? But, but the, the, what everybody is looking for, the moment you become a councillor, within six months you want to change your house. You want to begin to ride a big, a big car. You are a leader that says... Uh, um, a member of House of Rep or a senator or a governor, everybody wanted something drastic change because he said, it's my turn now, this is my own people's turn, and then selfishness. And instead of looking for the general good of the pop, pop, uh, public, we are looking at our own personal gain. And when it comes like that, the populace will suffer. No development and no advancement. Yes, I think our challenge here is, and I want you to look at it, the concept of worship. Many of us, I was reading a book, it said many of us don't understand the concept of worship. We think worshiping, worship means to go and be sleeping and slay in either the church or the mosque. It's a real worship. It's when you are able to create something yeah. to make things better for, for other us. people. When you are in your offices, when you, any work you are doing, when you think more that what can we do better, the person was using the example of somebody that is making bridges. Mm -hmm. He said, do you think you that you are in the mosque or in the church, you have more reward than someone that is making bridges for people to pass? How will you look at that from religious, the concept of worship? How will you look at it that probably we need to change this concept of worship for us to actually understand our relationship with God? Yes, I, I agree with you, Imam, that we need to change that. In fact, when Jesus was on earth, he was not just preaching. That was he was going about Acts chapter 10, verse 38. He was how Jesus anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He was going about healing, delivering saving people, emancipating people. Now, in our churches, what are we supposed to do? Are we just preaching the gospel in our in the religion in our in the mosque? Are we just preaching? Are we making that gospel to be practical to people? Pragmatic and social responsibility for us. How many people are you paying their school fees that are indigent students? How many places have you been able to sink boreholes for those who don't have clean water to drink? How many people have you been able to help to have hospitals? These are part of development. Sometimes we, we think that these are things government should do, but government alone can't do it. Religious institutions also should be part of this, it's part of development. And then when we are doing this, when the people that we elected in the offices are not doing right, the church also, just like Imam said the, the, the first time, if the people that are in government offices are not doing well, and we are not cautioning them, they will continue to do their evil. But if the church, and then you are not collecting money from their hands. Because if someone is able to do a road for the community, and has come to see the pastor, or has come to see the mom and collected money, when it comes for prayer, you, won't, you will not challenge him that you are not doing right. As a counselor, as a chairman of local government, as a senator, your constituency a project. Mm -hmm. So, but if the pastor has collected money, if the imam has collected things here, yeah, of course, he will be able to preach against that. Mm -hmm. These are the area where the church and the religious institutions also have a place mm -hmm. to correct themselves 
in order for us to have development as it supposed to be. Yeah, I think um, I will also go back to your question on the real act of worship, yes. ibadah. Yes. Um, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad mm -hmm. sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mm -hmm. said in one of his hadith, hadith to Tirmidhi, where he said, "By the one whose hands is my soul," he was swearing. He said, "You will not enter paradise until you believe, and you will not believe until you love one another." Here is telling us that worship is about love. And that is why as Muslims, you go to the mosque. Nobody has a position in the mosque. The imam only has all other people, you are the same. Meaning that there must be equality. In the mosque, there must be a form of education as part of your worship. If you are ignorant, then you cannot worship. And how do we uh, elevate ourselves in the society is by education. I want us to situate our discussion to what we call actual development that we are seeing today. The United Nations say, okay, we have about 17 goals of development put together. And as really as the Quran 1,441 years back, the Quran had already told us about how we have to take care of one another. When Adam was created, he was put in what? In the garden. Mm. And Allah said, Inneka fiha wala I have put you here. You will never be hungry. I will provide for you. I will feed you. I will give you shelter. You will never be thirsty. I will provide water for you. So as a responsible... Wala boom, yeah, wala mm -hmm. So I will not even allow you to, li to, to live in... Uh, you will not be naked. Okay. Meaning that... I will provide shelter. No, there will you. be technology to produce clothes. Clothes for you, sure, I will. sure. I will prov provide clothes for you. I will provide shelter for you. I will provide everything that is needful mm -hmm. to you as human being. Okay. So if God can say this, and He's providing up to this moment mm -hmm. for us, but how are we now feeling indifferent about this? Because some people have decided to take away the right of other people. And when you are not being just in any society, what we call social justice, giving to those their own, what they deserve in the society. When you are not giving to them, then they will be lacking certain developmental uh, in the, uh, things in their own environment. And if that is there, then there will be a lot of disparity. People will be angry. People want to vent their anger. People want to react. So these are the reason why we are having all this problem, and that is why we are going backwards. In a society where all these differences and this gap have been breached, you get what I'm saying? They enjoy religion more. If you go abroad, you want to pray in the church, in the mosque, there are a lot of decorum, there are a lot of respect. I will not say because I'm a Muslim, I want to call prayer and I will disturb my neighbor. You, you can't do that. Because you will not, I will not say because a, a church, you want, to, you want to worship and you disturb others. Mm. We have churches there, they worship, and nobody disturbs one another. No, a, that, that is, that, that, there is a church in Abuja here, mm. and I always continue to honor that church, Equa Church mm. in Wusetu. When they are doing services, you will never hear any noise outside, and they will never stop anybody from passing the road, and that's something. Every day, I think I'm happy that I'm, able, I'm saying this in public today. Equa Church in Wusetu, when you pass through the road in the, close to their church, they will not block it. And you will not hear noise that they will be disturbing others. I've been monitoring for the past 18 years. Wow. So personally, I've been monitoring, and I want to appreciate them in public, that well done, all the management of Equa Church in Wusetu here in Abuja. Please keep it up. And I think that was very important, uh, Imam, for bringing that up. And I believe also it's the issue of the love, loving our neighbors mm -hmm. as ourselves. Very, very important. That is art of worship, art of religion also. We must do this for the good of our society. Okay. And God will help us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, yes. But we have seen the challenges now. But we cannot continue to be complaining, complaining. What are we going to do? And what we are going to do, we we'll discuss this after this short break. You are watching NTA, Nigerian Television Authority. For more information and news updates, visit our website at www.nta.ng. Or you can follow us on Twitter at NTA News Now. Or you can like us on Facebook at NTA Network News. Stay connected on our YouTube channel. 
at www.youtube.com slash NCA News Online. Watch our live stream at www.nca.ng slash live. NCA, you can't beat the rich. You are just joining us. This is Abrahamic Mission, and we are welcome back. We have been discussing religion and development. You have discussed a lot of things where we are not developed, where we are not developed, and the position where we are, where we are supposed to be. Now, do we continue to complain? What do we do now as a nation that we will now use the opportunity God has given to us because of our religiosity or because of our spirituality and the word I said, godless, godliness? You see, there are three things now. Some people are religious. You are the one you see in the mosques and churches. Mm. Some people are spiritual. They are the one, the only thing they want from God is prayers. They want magic. Mm. They will feel that it is, they are the one who controlled God. They, I call them the spiritual people. But as some the godly one, you will not see them too, too spiritual, too, too religious. Mm. Yet everything they do, they consider God. And they are the few among us, the religious people who claim to be religion, what should we be doing now for us at least to move up from development, uh, as far as development is concerned? Well, um, I think um, it, the, even the scripture itself, the Bible and the Quran has made it easier for us. If only we can just take lessons from these books. Um, if you look at the 17 goals of the United Nations, uh, called the SDGs. Uh, in 2026, in 2016, it was actually changed from Millennium Development Goals to Sustainable Development Goals. And these actually resonate well with our religion, with our books, with our scriptures, because there's no religion that supports hunger. Mm -hmm. There's no religion that supports heal health. That, look, for instance, we have coronavirus, everybody's running elter skelter. And then we, the churches are praying, mosques are praying to, for God to curtail this for us. So we have the responsibility as religious leaders because we occupy a very, very sensitive position in the society. We have the followers, the politicians are followers, the youth are followers, the mothers, they are followers. We need everybody. They believe in our words. They see us as the custodian of the only scriptures. And when we speak, they see our tongue as being that God is speaking. So we can use this opportunity we have to help accelerate development in our various society and come. And first, what we need to do is to give the right education, the right literacy about our scriptures. To play down a little bit, I was telling you this issue of miracle. The only miracle you can have in the mosque and in the church is to impact positively on other, in other people is to change the tide of poverty, this poverty thing, and create a level where people can actually as well be happy that they can at least live with certain things, providing social basic amenities for the people. I know the church cannot provide, the mosque cannot provide, the government has the responsibility to do that, but we also have our only two responsibilities. Time immemorial, we know churches, I know of Catholic churches, I know of, I know of mosque and Saruddin, and they provide support Schools. for people. They are into education, they provide education, quality education. Before the government took over from the missionaries, they were, they were the one sponsoring our education. Most of the products we have today that are well educated today, they are product of churches, missionary schools. In the past, what are we still doing? We need to go back there. So, two, we have seen the situation. I've traveled around. I saw a church having a farm. Hmm. That church contributes money. We call them our uh, sisters or something. They contribute money every month, and they give to the farm. The the farm. Uh, 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 what called managers, they invest the money into agriculture, and every month, each member of the church goes to the farm to collect food, what they are going to eat for that whole month. So, oh, they only contribute money 
they use that money to farm. farm. It's not that when they now to, to, to the farm, they don't pay any money again. They no, they don't pay any money again. So they have invested for their monthly feeding in the farm. Mm. And the farm is very huge. And they have about close to about 150 membership that are contributing to that farm. And you know what? The amazing thing is that those that are well-to-do don't even take from the produce of the farm. They allow those that are in need to go there and get what they will eat. So they are happy. They, they are, they are, at least they have uh, you know, bridged the gap. Can we replicate hunger. that one? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, as an organization, we've started with the Strength in Diversity Development and Islamic Platform. Okay. We now we have farms in uh, in uh, Oshun State. Mm -hmm. We have uh, in uh, Kwara State. Okay. And the whole essence of this is to bring our membership to actually buy a stake in this farm. That's good. And once they have a stake, they can now replicate that. Reverend energy. is itching. Yes. He, yeah, he I know wants they have to say a lot something. <laughs> and I want him to say it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I believe, just like you said, what do we do with this crisis, mm -hmm. with the problem in our hands? Mm -hmm. uh, Imam uh, Sharif told us that we have a role to play. We have followers. The religious people, we are the closest to the poor people. And the rich people too. And the rich people. <laughs> okay. We are, we are the closest to them, just like you said. Now, what do we do? What do we tell them? I think we need to begin to tell them the truth. One of the truths we need to tell the, our followers is that everything does not end here on earth. Mm. Mm. Bible says good name is better than silver and gold. Mm. Because if somebody is selfish enough to want to, what, is belong, what belongs to your community, you are matching to yourself. One day you're going to die. And everybody should remember that because that's very, very, very important. If somebody understands that, that one day is going to die, they die, where do you go? And then what will people be saying after you have left here? And that's very, very important. That's the first thing in resolving some of the uh, lapses and gaps concerning development. Number two, I think also I want to challenge the government also to do some things. Let there be enforcement of laws mm -hmm. without prejudice. Okay. With, let there be enforcement of law. If there's enforcement and there are consequences, mm. people will behave very well. Number three also is that the church and the religious stream must Let's stop only. I mean, stop from only preaching. Let practicalize what we are preaching. Show love. We thank God for those who are doing one thing or the other. There are universities, schools, and everything that people are doing here and there. Uh, yes, it's part of it. It's uh, talk about farm. There are churches that are having farms. There are uh, churches. Four square. We have university. Other churches. We have um, have university here and there. Secondary school and primary school, and also let there be a way by which we teach moral. The government. Can we? Are we forgetting our history, Imam? You know when you forget history. Now we are not longer teaching history in our schools. It was. And that is a bad situation for us. Yes. Some well, of the children today they don't know who are those people that fought for independence. For, yes. They don't even know them. And when you don't know all those things, it will affect your behavior, your character. Please formation. appeal to government to reintroduce history. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I want to say uh, that. I think, yes, let, let, let's introduce history in our, in our schools. I think recently it I, will help us. I read they just introduced that back to the schools. Okay. This history has been introduced. Yeah, yeah, so introduced wonderful. That, that God will continue to support yeah, this yeah, government. Yes, if that I is true, it they, means they did they a review. They, are, they, are, mm -hmm. they did a review and they felt it is very pertinent to bring back history into the curriculum, uh, especially from the uh, primary, secondary schools, where people can learn we from can, That one is enough. People. Mm -hmm. Very well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of other things that, sorry. No, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Reverend okay. is talking. I want okay. him to okay. land okay. first, yeah. please. Also, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I want also want to ask the, 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 church, the church and the mosque, can we focus more also on family life? Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the small family is what made the society. If the, I mean, the family is good, the society is going to be good, can we spend more time with our children? There are parents who are paying school fees of their children they do not know. Mm. They pay school fees, but they don't know those children. Mm. They don't have time for them. Because before the children will wake up in the morning, they have gone, before they return, the children have gone to bed. Who is, not, who is raising them? Are you raising your children for God, or are you raising your children for the devil? And the verses we are seeing today is as a result of people who are not raising their children for God. And then they are creating problems. And then finally, it's to our political leaders. You know, you have been, you, you are appointed, elected to serve us, not to serve your stomach. And the moment you are serving your stomach, you are destroying the system, you are destroying development. So therefore, I want to encourage our, our leaders, serve the people who elected you. 
and then this country, we are the most populous black nation in the world. In other words, for every black person you see in the world, every four black people you see, one of them is Nigerian because of population. That's how huge we are. And then we must not create problems for our world. Let, let, let's do what is right. Let this nation be where it's supposed to be. We have resources, but some people are matching for their own selfish interests. And that's what is killing us. And God will help us. God will help us. I think you want to say something? Or... Yeah, well, yeah, I just want to uh, also add mm -hmm. that um, both the parents, the religious institutions and faith-based organizations and the government must carry out what we call or engage in what we call human capital investment. Human capital investment. Investment. Okay. When you fail to invest in your youth, if you look mm. at the population of Nigeria, close to about 55% of mm. our population are the youth. Mm. And uh, what is happening here and there, kidnapping, um, insurgency, and so on, this as a result of us neglecting that aspect of our population. So if we must, there must be what we call an integrated effort both government, the religious institutions, and those who has the means to bring up resources to build the capacity of our youth, ensuring that they are ready to actually take development to another level. Otherwise, it will be difficult. Otherwise, it will be, be difficult. difficult. But what do we do? The government in every level now, is that they are Muslim or Christian? Yes. What do you will you be telling them that will you even not challenge them that are you happy the way we are? Yes, that, that, that will be our responsibility as religious leaders that telling them the truth telling them the truth that they are not leading us very well and then so that they may because of that leave your church or leave your whatever mm -hmm. but it doesn't, it doesn't matter but speak the truth and very, very important. I think all of our leaders, we should, we should correct the people that are in government that are following us, that, are, that we are their pastors, we are their imams. We should correct them and let them know that everything does not end here on earth. Because one day they're going to stand before God. Because in our climb here, in other, in other, in other uh, countries, they are responsible, they, they, they are servant of the people. But for us in Nigeria, they are our guard, they are our boss here. Yeah. But let them know that one day they are going to stand before God to be judged. And they give account of their life. I'm afraid with Reverend. You are making me to be afraid because and that is the truth. each time you talk, you talk more of death, 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 and reward of death. Yes. Because I believe that is the only thing that is certain. We have been living in this world now. Yes. I think the oldest in Nigeria should be 152 already, yes. Now... Some people have been there before those who were born. That's right. They have died. Where are they? I think that is the question yeah. the Reverend is saying that where we are going is longer yeah, than, 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 than where we are. What are we going to use when we get to where we are going? Imam, what do we do? Yeah, I, I think there is something that is missing that I need us to quickly connect back. Okay. The religious leaders, mm. be it Muslim or Christian, mm. first of all, we need to come together. Mm -hmm. Like what is just said, if, for instance, you come to my mosque and I know you have done something that is wrong and I need to tell you, I'm telling you the truth. And you go to, the, because I say, okay, I won't go to your mosque, I won't come to your mosque, I won't go to this church. Okay. I go to, if you, if you go there and you get the same thing, That's right. and you go to the other church or you get the same thing, you'll be forced to you look change. critically to what you are doing and change. So I feel that as religious leader, we need first of all to work hand in hand. Muslim leaders, Christian leaders, we need to, jet, to, to actually uh, go away from this issue of uh, is my, I mean, Our, oh, No, let me give you an example. There is a church, I don't want to mention his name, it's the only church I know. I don't know that other ones that I used to pray for Professor Loyede, hmm. who happens to be Secretary of Surikas, for example, the Registrar of Jam. Jam. Okay. It's a church, a pastor. Anytime I see him, he's always praying for him. I said, well, I said, he's doing the right thing. Hmm. So, so if all of us were to appreciate ourselves, ourselves. Not based on religious sentiments. Sentiment if differences. you see something that is doing something right, let him know and you support wherever he's coming from. Not just because you are not the one doing it. It's not your people that are doing it. You have to bring them down. Mm. 
I think that is the point is you are trying to yeah, raise. Yeah, we need yeah. to actually, you see, if a Christian is doing something that is good, as Muslim, let's yes, celebrate amen. him. Let's commend him. If a let's Muslim support is, him. Let's support him. <laughs> if a Muslim is doing something, don't say because he's a Muslim. No, I, I'm a Christian. No. This is, you see, when you talk about development, you look about common ground. You don't look at your differences. In Nigeria, we look at differences and we play up more of our differences. And that is why we are having all this problem. We know what is right. We know what is needed to be developed. We are all educated. We are all exposed. We say this when we see ourselves. But when we get back to our various constituencies, we do something different. So and we see Muslim as our enemy. We see Christian as our enemy. In as much we remain in this level, we, we would continue to be underdeveloped will not be developed. Until go abroad, you will see a Muslim, a, I, I can go to a, I've, I've been to a church and it, I told her the pastor I want to pray and he said, Imam, you can, I, I, okay, the last Juma we prayed in Washington, in Washington. DC. Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. I think I'm saying, yes. we actually prayed Juma in Inside the church. a church. In the church. We prayed in the church. The church themselves provided us space for Juma oh, service no. on Friday. You didn't conclude it. They also gave us food, food after the prayer. After the prayer. <laughs> they fed us lunch mm -hmm. after prayer. So the, if we can, that, that is why you see, they are, that is why you see they, they, are, they, are, they keep on developing and we are still struggling to catch up with them. So until we are able to take ourselves to that level, brothers and sisters in religion would, religion will have no place in development. No, we'll continue to be majority with minority Ma status. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We yeah. just have to understand that we are lucky. You see, I always look at Nigeria mm. with what God has provided for us. Mm. If you are thinking of Christian, the best of Christian, Christian yeah. and I always tell people, I do not know whether you know, mm. the last thing when they, were, they wanted to appoint the Pope, we have two Nigerians who are, who have qualified. Been, who are qu not just qualified, they will have been Pope. Pope. That's right. The two of them, are this, it has never happened, I don't know, yeah. in the history of Catholicism. It has, it has never. Yet Nigeria, only Nigeria, yeah. two. Two. Not level. just one, at that level, qualified to be Pope. Mm. In Saudi Arabia, mm. we have leaders in that country that are from Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. That the everything they want to do, they're from Nigeria. If you go to U.S., there are so many things that they are being done that those who are doing it are actually Nigerians. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Why do we now bring all these things into the table? Mm. So that what you have, you contribute. What I have, I contribute. What he has, he contributes. And at the end of the day, we make it. I think one thing we also need to understand. If Nigeria, if we are settled for just 10 years, <laughs> yeah, 10 years they will, they will the Muslims to... see Christian as his friend, as his brother, as his supporter, and vice versa. Exactly. Believe me, I do not know of that country in the world what? that can, beat, that us can us. beat us. How do we work together briefly? Because we, if we are going to work together, we need to love one another. And that is the point. Jesus said, yeah, will you know that you are my followers when you f love one another? And uh, you see, Bible also talks about loving your neighbor as yourself. We know the story of the Good Samaritan that shows that who is your neighbor? The person you can help, the person you can support, the person you can encourage, the person that is dying that needs something that you can give. The moment we, the thing that divides us, the moment you put them up, those things aside, and then we concentrate on those things that unite us. And those things, are, there are very many. Mm -hmm. Let's very remove those things that separate us and then focus on Let us remove those things that separate us and focus, focus on, conclude that, and focus on, on... On what brings us together as human beings. Humanity before religion. Humanity See, before, before religion. religion. I think that's important. a good one. We have to understand it that humanity before, before religion. religion. And when you are able, it means you have put God forward. Yes. When Moses was asking about God, he was looking at a mountain. God told him, in as much as you are seeing that mountain, you cannot see me. See me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. until when you are close your heart from seeing the mountain to know everything that you are seeing is actually God. That's God. what God is telling mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. What you are seeing is God. And when you are able to open your eyes and what you see is God. And that is when we can also move on. We thank you for being part of this program today. Mm -hmm. And that we know that when we invite you next other time, you will join mm -hmm. us. Please, and uh, Imam, we're also grateful for okay. your effort, for your thinking, for your support. May God, in his infinite mercy, come to support the I two mean, of you I mean, too. I mean, we so appreciate you. you. This is, might be the little we can have for today. Until when we meet next week, same time, same station. My name is to remain Imam Fouad Adeyemi, saying bye-bye. <laughs>